What is going on? Charles Bowenson here. I'm bringing up the notes on one of the better books that I've read. Probably one of the most notes I've taken in a while was Pitch Anything. It's been literally sitting on my, my bookshelf for probably four months. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Let me pick this up because we're looking to actually change our pitch. I'm in real estate. I own a real estate company actually here in the office on a Saturday at 4.27 p.m. to film this video. So pitch anything. It's essentially, you know, obviously it's pretty straightforward on the cover, an innovative method for, for, for presenting, persuading, and winning the deal. The author clearly is a boss at presenting. Like the guy brought up things that you've kind of heard before, but the way that he's explained it, you know what it is? It's kind of like you, you start hearing a story and then you hear about Michael Jordan and you're like, wow, that guy's good. So you mean he made, uh, he actually got 40 points in a game or 50 points in a game, 60 points a game. And most of them were three pointers or something. That's pitch anything. This guy, total, total suave. And he brings up something. I'll just start it off with this before I go into the notes. One of the biggest things that, that, I took away, besides what I'm about to talk about, is controlling the frame, okay? I've heard this when you are leading someone, when you're influencing, but I've never heard it really in the context of from the beginning to the end. In other words, when you meet, when you're pitching your idea for money or your product or your service or whatever the case is, we're, we're pitching our services to owners, is that you have to control the frame. The person that you're pitching should not be, be should not be controlling the frame. He brings up one point of this big, big boss who walks in 15 minutes late. Then he starts doodling on his notepad. The author says he got up, he walked outside, came back, and I think he like brought him water and he said, listen, if we're here to learn about my product or service, then we're here to learn about my product or service. If you need more time, if you need another time, we will schedule it. And, the, and just stopped. And the boss was like, what? Uh, okay, that's insane. And like adjusted, and that's it. Paid attention for the entire presentation, ended up buying the product. You have to control the frame. At that point, the boss was controlling the frame. Most people go into a pitch and they say, thank you so much for taking your time to meet with us. Da -da -da. And he's like, no, you have to walk in as the professional, as the person that is giving them a need that they want. All right, so number one is everything needs to have a pleasant novelty. No one's going to buy something that's run of the mill. No one's going to buy something that's average or they're settling for a product or service. No one likes that. I, owning a real estate company, I don't actually like one of our vendors. Like I like the people, but I don't like the actual service or product they're giving me, but I have no other choice. It's just run of the mill, but I have no other choice. If something else came along, I would buy it immediately. But that's the thing is, if you're pitching someone and three other pit people are pitching almost the exact same thing, you have to give something that's novel, that's something new, that sparks their interest, okay? I already said, set the frame. Set the frame, you are a professional, you are the one that's pitching them what they need to, what, there's two things. Steve Jobs said, I'm giving something to people that they may not need, they may not know they need. Okay, so there's, there's, there's that method, which is you're pitching something, you don't, they need it, but they don't know they need it. And then there's the other one, which is they need your product or service, so they're open to listening to you. Both of them are challenging, but either way, you have to control the frame from the beginning, okay? One of the, one of the best lines he talks about, and there's two ways, which is, guys, let, right before you get uh, started in the pitch, he goes, guys, let's get started. I only have about 30 minutes to give you the big idea, which will leave us enough time for Q&A at the end. You're literally setting the frame. Guys, let's get started. I have another appointment after. We still need to cover our Q&A and let's focus on the big idea, okay? And they're like, whoa, this is a professional. And I've seen it in real estate where there's the professional and then there's the 1%, the person that just, the professional is good, but then you have that 1% person that just, just knows their script, they know their presentation. Number three, you have to tell a story. I was just talking about the book Contagious. If you haven't actually, there you go, Contagious. If you actually haven't read that or seen my book review, it's 12 minutes. It's actually really good. Highly recommend that. Go into the YouTube channel and check that out. Tell a story. Everything is about a story. The story of your product, the story of the service, the story on how they're actually going to be, um, how their need is going to be met. You have to tell multiple stories. That's the only way people really pay attention in this world is that if you tell a compelling story, 
people are more likely to listen, let alone buy. You still have to close them, but they're more likely to listen and be open to your product or service. Reveal the intrigue. The intrigue could be, oh, I didn't know that stat. I didn't know that, um, you know, I put on some kind of amber glasses at night or blue blocking glasses and I'll actually sleep better. And then they'll bring up a percentage, 80% of the people that put on blue blocking glasses, and obviously this isn't a real stat, but 80% of the people that put on blue blocking glasses sleep better. And you're like, whoa, you know, that's something new. That was one of the biggest takeaways is that I have to bring up more statistics that people don't know about. People know that it's smart to buy a house, but I also have to bring up statistics that says by on average, the people that didn't buy a house, their net worth rose 5%, but other people it rose that purchased a home rose 10%. You know, they doubled it. So you have to actually bring up some kind of intrigue. Then you nail the hook point. The hook point is essentially you're bringing up a story you're controlling the frame, you bring up the intrigue, and then you have a hook point that essentially says, here's the bait. Here it is, here's, here's, here's the big idea, okay, for buying a home, which is, look at all the tax benefits. You're, gonna be, you're not gonna be throwing rent away. The interest rates are incredible. Whatever, whatever case you need to bring up, that's the hook point, which is, look at all these good ideas. You're just shoving good ideas right in front of them. That's the hook point. And then you have to get the deal and say, What's the offer you'd like to make? Are you ready to roll? Are you ready to lean on the pen? Okay, so you have the story, you have to control the frame, have some kind of intrigue, then you give them the big idea. The big idea is just a list of analytical and emotional reasons for the, how good would you feel having your parents entertaining, having your, your dinner parties over here, throwing ball in the backyard, you know, those are all feelings. Throwing the ball with your son in your backyard, how crazy is this? That would be amazing. I'd love to come to the housewarming party. You have your barbecue over there, blah, blah, blah. You're talking about the home. And you say, all right, what's the offer you'd like to make? That's closing the deal, all right? Keep on going. You are the prize. Respect your time and yourself. This is one of the base, biggest things that I took out of it, which is so many people go in so needy, Okay, it's, I always equate everything to dating is the guy that's never had a girlfriend is clearly going to be going in to maybe a conversation a little bit more needy than someone that's had five or six girlfriends because he says, I've already had girlfriends. I already know what I'm looking for. So he's just like, I'm, I'm the prize. You're the prize. Let's see if we work out with someone that's never had a girlfriend. You're kind of like, yeah, c can I get your number? It's the same thing when you go into a deal, you know, someone that's and. I've, I get pitched a lot. I know when someone is selling me, but they're not really selling me. They're, they're kind of respecting themselves, their time, their product, and everything else. This is the reason, this is, I'll tell you right now, this is how. So they'll call me, and you can hear it on their voice, which is higher pitched, they're asking questions. So they say, is this a good time to call? Is this a good time to talk? This is me. I say, okay, great, good morning. Charles Bowenston, Bowenston Properties International. How we doing? And then you just stop. Great, okay, let's get into it. Voice flatlines a little, how we doing? Instead of, how we doing? It's all in the neediness. When I call, I'm a professional. I, I know I'm not gonna waste your time. I get right to the point. I give them the compelling pitch, the, the compelling story. Respecting your time as well is that people respect, people respect people that respect themselves. So if I respect myself, people res will respect me because what am I gonna be re respecting about myself? The way I carry myself, when I'm on time, if I'm on time, are you wasting my time? Are you, am I, there's times that I've actually done this in the past, but until reading this book, I was like, well, why did this, th didn't seem like it worked out. And I'll tell you the story is that I can see in someone's eyes that they're not either gonna use me to sell their home or they don't want a home to buy. And I say, okay, it looks like you're not interested. And I'll be honest, it, it looks like you're not interested. And I'd say about 50% of the time, they're like, oh, actually I am. But you're, you're calling out the obvious because you're respecting your time. It looks like you're not interested. There's no point in keep. Okay, that's a little bit different than not being persistent. But then 50% of the time, they're like, yeah, you know what? This isn't the home. Let's move on. Okay, so when you bring up the obvious, you're respecting yourself and you're also respecting the time. Listen, are we, let's, let's go. Are we ready to roll? Here we go. Always use time constraints. And I'll, and I'll keep this video relatively short even though it's at 10 minutes. Always use time constraints. In other words, you always have to throw something out. So here's the other one. I'm glad we could find the time to meet. Not, 
I'm so happy that we can meet. I'm so happy that you could put me into your schedule. I'm glad we can find the time to meet with you today. I do have another meeting after this. Let's get started. Woo, that's fire right there, man. That is fire. I'm glad we could find the time to meet with you today. I'm glad we can find the time to meet with you today. And I do have another appointment, not but, always use and. And I do have another meeting after this. Let's get started. You're the professional. You're controlling the time. You're respecting yourself. And you're also controlling the frame. That's like the, the most golden line that I've ever heard. Here we go. Let's, let's wrap this up real quick. Create high status immediately. The longer you wait, the more it reinforces the status of your target. So in other words, if you put your, your target on a pedestal, which is, well, you're a really big company. You know, I know you're really busy. I, I'm so happy that you can meet with us today. If you keep on elevating them, you're, you're literally looking at someone that's like, please, please buy from us. But if you look at them eye to eye, this is the same thing as someone that goes up to a celebrity and acts as a fan or someone that walks up to a celebrity is like, oh, I really enjoy your movies. That, that celebrity is going to be more willing to talk to me than someone's like, oh my God, holy cow, it's Ben Affleck, it's George Clooney, da -da -da, and they get into it. By the way, I don't really care about any, either of those guys. If I saw him, I'm like, oh, it's George Clooney. But someone that I, say I saw Elon Musk, I'd be like, Elon, thank you so much for everything you're doing. I really wish you the best look on all of your endeavors. He's more willing to do that than say, holy cow, Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City, you're the craziest guy, the boring machine, everything. So you have to put them on the same level as you. You can't put them as a celebrity or as a, such a high status person that they're looking down at you and it looks like, and they feel that you're wasting their time sometimes. All right, here are the thing. When you pitch the idea, there's three things. Number one is you have to go into it economically. Okay, I used to only do emotionally, now I have to go into it economically. This is how it makes sense economically. Then you go into the social forces of why your idea, this person used it, this is the results after they used it. You have to go into social storytelling of other people. And then the third is the tech forces. People love the tech area. It's green, it's only on your app, it's only on your mobile phone. Uh, we call you, there's no paper trails, it's all in the cloud, it's on all of your devices, whatever the case is, whatever your tech is, for me, hey listen, if you sign today, there's no paperwork, you just sign on the iPad and then we're ready to go, it's sent to you, your email, let's go. Are you ready to go? Instead of sign this, this piece of paper, then I'll, I'll scan it over to you once my manager signs it, no, no, no e-signatures or uh, we use Google Docs, things like that. You know, what are the tech forces? What are the social forces? Who are the people that are using it? And then obviously the first thing, which is economical. Why does this make sense to actually buy the home or, or use you, okay? So I know that was a lot longer. That was 13 minutes. Was not expecting it to be that long. Highly recommend. Honestly, even if you are not in sales, you have to pick this up because you're, everyone is in sales, okay? I think he actually brings that up in the book. Everyone is in sales. I don't care if you are not in sales. Everyone's, you're selling your idea to your team. If you're on a team at a company, you're selling your idea to your children. You're selling yourself on a job interview. You're selling yourself on a date, on dating. You're also, even, in a, even when you're working for a corporation, you're selling yourself to get a raise or to move to a another position or to keep your job. You're always selling yourself. You're always selling your ideas. You're just walking down the street and you're selling yourself. People, do they want to talk to you? Do they not want to talk to you? Why, why do good things happen to me? Because I'm open to talking. It's taken me 10, 11 years to get to this point, but after 10, 11 years, this book really hit it home. So pitch anything, highly recommend picking this up. And then obviously this is contagious book review that I've already done. I'll link Contagious and um, the book below, Pitch Anything. Have an awesome day. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Love you all. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon.